Hi, this is Neil with Rock Our World. I'm going to call this episode Three Prophetic Dreams Dana Coverstone. I see there's all kinds of people giving their opinions and thoughts and their responses to the three dreams that this pastor from Kentucky, I believe he's from, had. And I'm going to highly recommend that you watch the 16-minute video. In fact, I've watched it several times to get some details. And uh, my opinion is that you should take it seriously. And I do have a saying. It's better to be prepared for something that doesn't happen than to not be prepared for something that does happen. Uh, also, I got lots of homework. Uh, I recommend and urge you to listen to It Will Happen by December by Dr. Richard Buttar. And that was released uh, or posted June 20th. The Three Prophetic Dreams from Pastor Dana, which is quite easy to find. Just put in those words. It was posted June 25th. And then I want to remind people that Bill Gates in a recent Town hall, town hall meeting casually remarked that the next contagion will hit us this fall. And then I also would uh, encourage you to listen to a, a uh, message that a pastor, Jonathan, uh, gave, and I'm, I'm guessing it was in South Africa. It came through my wife's trip to South Africa in a Bible college she taught at run by a pastor, Alan and Mary, in uh, Kenya. Anyway, this pastor, Jonathan, in episode 211, I uh, just relayed the message, and he is obviously an expert in electromagnetic uh, energy and uh, systems we have used, which have escalated over the years. And As he pointed out, started way back at the end of World War I with radio waves, and then we keep up in the power and polluting our entire world with these energy, these energies, electromagnetic energies. And the most recent one is the microwave system that we use to, to power our internet and our TV uh, connections and virtually all communication in our modern world and it's about to be ramped up to 5G. It has already been introduced uh, beginning in Wuhan, China and then in, uh, in uh, Italy and Spain, New York. You can kind of follow the epidemic and make the connection between the, the 5G system and the energy that it's uh, producing and polluting our body or harming our body our bodies and in fact as uh, Richard Rashid Buttar said it's affecting all life on the planet it's affecting the entire workings of the planet that's why our one of the reasons our weather is so bizarre anyway then uh, so I've given you four things for homework, but I also remind people to uh, take the time to listen to Julie Wedby's prophecies. You can go back as far as you want, say a year and a half, but start with the most recent ones, a couple. Uh, she focuses on the Bride of Christ, which is, uh, I've just finished a series of five. I called it the Bride of Christ is Chosen, and I don't mean that it's already chosen but it is in the process of being chosen we see it in revelation 7 1 to 8 where 144,000 people are marked a mark is set upon them they're set apart they become the set apart ones that's one of the phrases god's used god has always used for his people the ones that truly obey him and truly follow him and then i also would encourage you to keep track of the prophecies that come through uh, Barbara and 
Dan on God Sealer 7, and then also The Lord is My Shepherd. I listened to a few of Miss Sophie's messages. Now, those first four are quite important. They're uh, that I gave you, they're tying together the the uh, 5G system with uh, with our world pandemic of what's being called COVID-19 or the coronavirus. That it would appear our, that a a virus is actually a byproduct of our body trying to clean up the damaged damaged and dead cells that this uh, electromagnetic energy going through our body causes. And uh, it's uh, quite possible that uh, the flu and colds were never heard of before 1918, when the whole world became immersed in radio waves. That was the first major pandemic uh, that, caught, that, uh, that went worldwide and they estimated it claimed between 50 and 60 million people at a time when the world population was very, very low compared to what it is now. I meant to look that up, but let's say it was one, two billion people. It could be off in that, but the percentage is very, very high of the people that were affected by that. And uh, so you can see every time they uh, up, up the power, like they introduced radar at the end of World War II, and this pastor Jonathan goes through, in episode 211, goes through this history. Anyway, this is all information. Before I forget, I would also highly recommend ordering the book, The Final Quest Trilogy. It is a series of, of prophetic uh, visions and I won't say dreams, uh, dreams, visions. Anyway, it was an ongoing vision that God gave through Rick Joyner. It was a message to his whole church, anyone who would listen. And it was a metaphoric description of the Great Tribulation. Gives a great deal of insight so you know how to navigate through the troubled years that are ahead of us. And then lastly, but very, very importantly, Get a hold of the Book of Jubilees. I've recommended seven books, actually, and Joseph Lumpkin's uh, compilation of called The Lost Books of the Bible, Great Rejected Texts. The Book of Jubilees is very key in understanding this final jubilee of 50 years, during which the Great Tribulation unfolds. Now, I have, for a few people, if they are new, make sure or do your very best to go through the last five episodes. I did a series, as I said, called The Bride of Christ is Chosen, and the Lord wants us to be, all to be striving to be among the bride. And in Rick Joyner's uh, vision, the Final Quest trilogy, what he was given, he saw them as the first army. And they were a perfect army. Of, uh, that is, they, they were people that had uh, given themselves wholly to the Lord. And they did exactly what they were told. They trusted their Lord 100%. And they did, followed the orders. Every person stayed in their place. And that's described in the book of Joel. The uh, end time army described in the book of Joel, I think it's Joel 2, where everyone stays in their place, does exactly what they're told, and they accomplish the will of God in, in, in this great tribulation. So that's one of the things to bear in mind, that everything we see happening in this world is God's design. He's using the New World Order and the you know, all the evil that's developed in this world, he's using them as pawns. He knew from the beginning what they would be doing right now, and he has created the Great Tribulation. It is uh, 
it is the most important event of all of human history because it produces the first fruits. And God is going to use those first fruits first, the bride of 144,000, secondly, the second army that Rick Joyner saw, who would be the wise and the foolish bridesmaids, and they're 10 times that amount, so that would be a million four hundred and forty thousand people and then lastly uh, the third army now in Rick Joyner's vision the third army was dismissed it, in fact is the latest in church but if you read Matthew 22 1 to 14 you see that then the Lord goes ahead and replaces those guests to the wedding which refuse to come to the wedding and that is the latest in church and that is as i have said is 99.9 percent .9 of the present day church now hopefully that's an exaggeration but i suspect it's very close and then what the lord does he takes the last 40 years of the of this jubilee cycle he takes a huge group of people if the numbers uh, are correct, I have said there will be 360 million people collect on the shores of South Africa about seven years from now. And God is going to take those people through the last wilderness trek of 40 years. So we're back to the, the pattern and the prophecy of the great exodus. And... Uh, now we know the meaning of the 70 weeks of Daniel, what it would be, what it should be translated properly. It should say the 70 sets of weeks of years. In other words, 70 jubilees. There's 70 jubilees between the first exodus, which happened on the 50th jubilee of time, from the, from the time Adam and Eve were created, when this present creation was put in place when God started this most recent part of his plan. You've got to remember the angels were created long before this. We don't know the time frame, but it could very well be millions of years in, in our reckoning of time. Uh, but anyway, the, the book of Jubilees is, a, is key to understanding these things, that God uh, had the children of Israel, who we still are today, the Christian church is the lost ten tribes, and the, and the Jewish church are the house of Judah. So we have the house of Israel and the house of Judah. But at that time, he took them uh, out of Egypt in, an, in a great exodus. And that whole saga, that whole story of 40 years, and then you have to back up 10 to get the entire Jubilee cycle. And to do that, you have to study the three accounts of the great exodus. And I have gone through all these things, and I'm going to say the last 50 or so episodes, maybe going back further. If this interests you, just search the titles and go where the Lord leads you. But the... Uh, the Lord created the, the first exodus as a prophecy for the second exodus. So once you study the three accounts of the exodus, one is in the book of Moses, one is in the book of Jubilees, and the third one in the book of Jasher. And Jasher can be found in uh, Joseph Lumpkin's compilation there, Lost Books of the Bible. And it's important also to read the book of Enoch because the calendars of the Lord are, are described in that book. And I've spent a lot of time relaying how, how you find the appointed times of the Lord. That's very, very important. Start by keeping the Sabbath day, which is not Saturday or Sunday. The Lord's Sabbath is, is something that comes from a sign from either the sun, the moon, or the stars. That's found in Genesis 1.14. And I've gone through these things many times, so just go back in episodes if this is of interest to you, and I hope it is, because uh, we are faced with a very, very 
difficult trials in our immediate future. We are already in the Great Tribulation. It started almost three years ago, and the bride, if my if my figuring is right, my bits and pieces that I'm putting together, but uh, hopefully with the Lord's direction, while that is correct, the bride will be chosen next spring on Lamb Selection Day, the 10th day of the first month next spring, which marks 1260 days from the beginning of the tribulation, from this, when this present final 50 year jubilee started to unfold with the great sign of September 24th, 2017. So, now back to Pastor Dana's three prophetic, prophetic dreams. I recommend that you take this very seriously. We could all uh, see if you think about it and process things with God's help, that the whole economic system is in the process of crashing. And all the things that we put our trust in as humans, that we've built our world upon, upon making money and saving money and, and planning for our retirement and relying on our pension, our pensions and our savings and investments and so on. All that is going to disappear. And and uh, what Jonathan saw, Dana, sorry, wrong pastor. What Dana saw in his dream that this fall, by the end of the year, and he said it starts in September and works its way through to December, that the whole financial clip uh, system worldwide would collapse. Now we knew this was coming. You can't shut down the whole world for three months and expect it to keep going when it was already barely getting by. It was, it's a debt ridden system and God's instructions provide for uh, an economic system that will work without any inflation where you forgive all debts every seven years and you return all land to its rightful owner every 50th year. So anyway, I would recommend that you take Jonathan's dreams very seriously. I would recommend that you prepare properly and uh, the first thing is spiritually, far, far more important than any physical preparations, but once you are putting that in place, your spiritual preparations of repentance from sin and your um, obedience to the Lord's instructions, and, and remember that sin is the transgression of the Torah, that's 1 John 3, 4, and that our Lord Jesus Christ does ask us to, to observe his Torah. That's Matthew 5, 17 to 19, where he declared that he did not come to, to make, uh, to end the, the Torah, to make it obsolete. He came to fulfill it, the Torah and the prophets, and he, then he went on to say, if you break the least commandment of the Torah and teach others to do the same, you will be called least in the kingdom. Now, the Christian church does not teach this, nor does the Jewish church. Obviously, they, by and large, don't believe in Yeshua, but turns out he's a Shem, and he said exactly the same thing to them, that they're to follow the Torah. And that does not include the oral Torah. So, we're back to, if indeed this is correct, and I'm taking it seriously, we have less than two months, upwards to three or four months, to make adjustments in our lives if they're needed, that we should know the scriptures by now. It's getting a little late to 
get them down into our hearts, but you can learn very quickly with a right heart. And that is what the Lord's looking for. He's not looking for people that got every point of theology correct. I spend a lot of time teaching on the points of theology from scripture, of course, not from any religion per se. Uh, so it's important that you ask the Lord to give you a right heart and a right heart is willing to learn. When you start feeling resistance to the Lord's Torah, which includes about 600 separate commandments, that is the very clear indication that your heart is hard. And I've given you those three scriptures in Ezekiel many, many times, where the Lord in these last days offers to repair our hearts by taking that old hard heart out of our chest and replacing it with a heart of flesh, a soft heart, a soft, and the metaphors clearly indicate that he will help us have this desire to be obedient to him, not through uh, ritual and not through fear, although the fear of the Lord is something different than just scared fear. It's respect for the Lord and the belief and confidence that what he tells us is correct and that when he asks us to do all these different things within the Torah that he already knows they work and we don't have to question him on that and that we can have confidence that that's the way as he says to have life and blessings. And when we disobey the Torah of the Lord, that guarantees that we will have curses followed by death. And that story has never changed from the first word of Genesis to the end of Revelation, where Yeshua, Jesus Christ, says, I want you obeying my commandments. And if you study the, the four testimonies of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you'll see clearly, especially in John 14, 15, 16, 17, that Yeshua didn't have a single word that came from himself. He relayed a message from his father. And his father's message has never changed, ever. God never, ever, ever changes. That's the reason we can trust our God, because he never changes. So, uh, now, I talked about getting your spiritual house in order turning your life completely over to the Lord, and he will help you do these things. Just with all the sincerity that you have, turn your life completely to the Lord. And uh, when you start reading scripture, and you see something you're supposed to do, and one of the things you'll see if you read right through from start to finish is, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So I have taught people what the Sabbath day is. Uh, uh, easy thing to do is prove that it is not Sunday and it is not Saturday. Not so easy to prove that it is a day that the moon marks out in its cycle. But I've spent lots and lots of episodes and words describing all these things so you can take them to the Lord. Once the Sabbath day becomes clear to you and you start following it, then the Lord will give you revelation of the meaning of the all the other appointed times. And there's nine appointed times that he wants us keeping all the time. The Sabbath day, the new moon festival, and the seven yearly festivals. And then there's another appointed time, the great tribulation that we are already in. And as uh, I think probably Julie has done the best job of this, Julie Wedby, but there's others who have said the same thing, that each trial this world goes through, the last one being the COVID-19 trial, will barely get through that when something much worse will happen. So the warning is that this fall, whether it is a, a second round of COVID-19 or they'll come out and say it's a new contagion, 
I suspect when you read these, do your homework here with these first four uh, things I mentioned, that uh, they're going to turn up the 5G full blast, or they already have. And as Pastor Jonathan in episode 211 pointed out, our bodies, it takes a few months for our bodies to start exhibiting the symptoms of this electromagnetic in interference that's going through our bodies and causing damage to our cells and causing all kinds of problems in our brains and in our mood, our memories. Our, our, it's just a, a lot of effects of what's going on. And the powers that be know all this stuff and they have an agenda, but they are doing nothing that God has not already put in place in a plan. Now, I'm just reminded of uh, one more. You have lots of homework. One more I've recommend many, many times, Richard Sklar, a testimony. It's uh, not very long. If you, hopefully, you can still search through, put in uh, Richard Sklar archives and find a transcript of his experience in the heavenly court. And what you'll find out is that uh, all the events of the Great Tribulation were planned from the beginning of time, just as the Lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. God has a very, very detailed and specific order of events in the Great Tribulation, which is the most important part of his plan. And they began to be revealed just a year and a half about ago. So whatever you knew or thought you knew about the Great Tribulation through through eschatology, I believe they call it, was wrong. And uh, you can check out another message that came through Richard Booker. You'll find it on a Richard on a Sid Roth It's Supernatural program and I'm going to say it was September 2016. But if you put in Richard Booker and look for that particular uh, testimony where the, the Lord downloaded the entire Bible into his brain in, in one instant and he fell flat in the floor and thought he was going to die and then he proceeded to tell him several things but one of them is that the church has not understood correctly how the tr great tribulation unfolds that everything they believe is wrong so anyway here I am in this late hour teaching that the whole tribulation takes 50 years. The most traumatic part has already begun three years ago and it will escalate constantly. And so the Pastor Dana's warning fits very well into this that the next round is going to be much, much worse than our COVID-19 round. And that once your, your spiritual house is in order, and that's an ongoing process of repentance, of, of doing our very best to turn our lives completely over to the Lord, then make some spirit, uh, physical preparations. And, and that would be store some food, some uh, non-perishable, like dry grain, canned goods, water, um, anything that the Lord brings you to your mind. Do some preps in that regard. But at the end of the story, the only way any of us are going to survive the years ahead is through the supernatural help of the Lord. So bottom line is you do what he says. And to do that, you have to know how to hear God's voice. So he will teach you. If you don't have confidence that you can hear God's voice, then calling them right now and just like I do I'm no superstar and uh, wait for that still small voice and then when you have confidence that you've heard something then go ahead and do it anyway I think I got a wrap here that was my encouragement to take seriously pastor Dana's three dreams and that this fall we're going to see 
um, financial collapse begin worldwide. And we already know that there's a, a world order, a new world order. And there's an agenda. I think uh, Agenda 21 is one of the names given to it. If there's a plan put in place by evil people. But in fact, it's God that has put this whole plan in place. And he's bringing humanity through uh, an intense trial called the refiner's fire. And he's looking for his first roots. First the bride, then the bridesmaids, and then the guests to the wedding. And going back to what I said about the gathering of all the world's believers that are left alive about ten, about seven years from now on the shores of South Africa, a much expanded and blessed nation at this point. I expect Kenya will be one of the provinces of this expanded nation. And then the Lord's going to take those 360 million people and he's going to march them through the wilderness. And the indication is that 10% will choose to begin to obey the Lord and his Torah, the teachings and instructions, which have always and will always give you blessings in life and disobedience has always and will always give you curses and eventually death if you refuse to become an obedient follower follower of the God of Israel. So I'll call that a wrap. This is Neil Buchanan with Rock Our World.